That is Abraham Calderon, originally from Puebla, Mexico, now living in Southgate, California. His pro debut was here a year ago. A decision he dropped. He was with Israel Vasquez, the former boxer world champion as a trainer. He's now moved on, found the new home. And Beto last year he turned pro and had a record of zero and three, but in his last bout, September 24th, he rebounded for his lone victory, a four round decision over Evan Hernandez. So he does come in with a little bit of momentum. Joe Martinez is ready to go. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen, next bout tonight. Four rounds, this in the super welterweight division. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing gray with yellow, he weighed in officially 149 and one half pounds. He enters the ring tonight for the fifth time as a professional, hailing from Los Angeles, California. Here is Abraham Calderon. And his opponent across the ring, finding out of the red corner, wears black trunks trimmed in gold with both the flag of Mexico and the USA. He weighed it officially 148 and one half pounds, and in five bouts stands perfect with five victories. No defeats, four wins by way of knockout, fighting out of it representing Santana, California. Here is the undefeated Alexis Rocha. And your referee in charge of the action is Wayne Hedgeman. Okay, we're good here. You got your instructions in the dressing room. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Touch him up. Wayne Hedgeman, our third man in the ring. The tell of the tape for this one, Steve, it's four rounds. And you take a look at the age difference. Alexis Rocha still just 19 years old. He also has a noted advantage in terms of reach. We're underway. Alexis Rocha is the southpaw from Segerstrom High School. And he's very aggressive, comes out early. 5-0, four KOs, a fighter that Golden the Boy is really high on. Has that power, he's got four KOs. Body shot landed by Calderon. Calderon is a fighter who's fearless. He said he'll fight anybody at the 47, 52. It doesn't matter, he just likes getting in the boxing and working at it. Now training at the NGBA in Linwood. And, and there you see the left from Rocha. That is a heavy shot he has. And Beto, he certainly has not been hard to find for Rocha, which is kind of a double jeopardy here. Uh, one thing, he is aggressive, but at the same time, he is right in the wheelhouse of Rocha. He has not been uh, what I would call an elusive target here in the first minute. Alexis Rocha, about the age of 12, 13, he went to the gym with his brother Ronnie because he was Overweight, almost 200 pounds. Started training to lose weight, and then they realized once you shed that weight, there was a lot of power in that left hand. Took it serious with Hector, his trainer. 
and went to some big time tournaments and started winning and knocking people out. Here he is as a professional at 147 pounds. Got to give Calderon credit, Beto. He certainly is not here to lay down and act like, well, just as I say that, he actually looks like he's come up just a little bit prone. It may have been a low blow. That's certainly what his body language is suggesting. But he has been right in the wheelhouse, and he's been right in the pocket with Rocha here early on. Calderon <laughs> gets stung with the left. He is staying right there, Steve, in that pocket. There is no moving from him. Right, and that's the problem. He's going to be right in line with most of what Rocha is going to want to do, which is going to be punch. One thing we know about him, he has very, very heavy hands from the both sides. And he's paying a price, but I tell you what, he's making Rocha work in here in the first. He's landed a couple of his own. Rocha says the day he became a pro, the first time the punches landed, he told himself, whoa, this feels a lot better than the amateur world. Well, you go from what, big gloves to eight ounce gloves, yep. but at 147 also, you're hitting guys without headgear. Now, if Calderon's gonna be inside, I think he's gotta be right where he is. He's gotta be all the way inside. The theory is when you do something like this to a puncher, what you wanna do is be able to smother them and not allow them to really unfurl those arms and catch you at the end of their punches. It's like throwing inside a, a hit big hitter? Absolutely, or just throwing a wool blanket on a fire, just smothering. Final seconds of the opening round. It is scheduled for four in the super welterweight division. Alexis Rocha, Abraham Calderon. the action from the opening frame. You see Rocha with the right hook, second one misses. That's the story of round number one, though, with really the aggression of Calderon, who may have not won the round, but he certainly made it difficult for Rocha, who has made the work here in the first three minutes. And we take a look, and there is that low blow that had him keeling over here in round number one. Just a hard warning from referee Wayne Hedgepest as we begin round number two. Alexis with, they call him, at a TKO boxing in Santa Ana. Alexis Rocha, mom from Zacatecas, Mexico. Thanks to Vanessa and Miss City's watching us on Ring TV tonight. There's always our security blanket, Linus in Philadelphia, ah. watching us. Raging Babe eating cookies and watching tonight. Wepa. You're watching a youngster and Alexis Rocha looking good here through his first round. Oh, and a body shot. shot drops Calderon here early in the second. A body shot that everybody in the building heard. Uh, Beto, that was a right hook right around the left elbow of Calderon, perfectly placed. Oh, a stiff left from Rocha. More body work from Alexis Rocha, the 19-year-old. Body work, digging in, digging in. Calderon's game, don't know for how much longer. Roach is trying to end this one here. Body work, more from Rocha. Trying to smother him is Calderon. Another body shot, stiff. Left from Rocha. Calderon sneaks one of his own in there. Patience right now from Alexis Rocha here in the second. You know, Beto, I think this has been some pretty good work here. I get the sense this fight will not see the distance, but unlike his other knockouts, he's actually been made to work a little bit uh, in the lead up to this. As we mentioned before, out of his four knockouts, three of them have come in the first round. He's 5-0, four KOs. And the one that did go the distance 
the fighter, let's just say, wasn't anywhere near <laughs> Alexa's arms. Felt the power early and kept his distance. Younger brother, Ronnie Rios, who will be in the, in the ring in about an hour. Ronnie is in the corner of Alexis right now. It's more of a veteran move there by Calderon, isn't it? No, there isn't. One thing that they're going to have to work on, and Rocha, I think, again, valuable experience, learning how to work with a guy that's going to smother and tie him up. Uh, I get the sense as his reputation grows and he puts more fights under his belt, a lot of guys are going to try to do exactly what Calderon do, did, at least early on, smother and tie up on the inside. That left from Rocha really stings. And in round number two, it was a more sustained dominance here from Alexis Rocha. We take a look at that body shot that floors Calderon in round number two. Left-handed punch sweeping across the right elbow of Calderon, and that was the only knockdown. But to Calderon's credit, Beto, he is up and at it. And we do begin round number three. Third round, schedule for four to Alexis Rocha, the southpaw, and Abraham Calderon. Calderon, one and three. He was here a year ago in his pro debut, and he lost a decision. Body work. Alexis Rocha digs into the body. Steve, I know that's one thing you stress with young fighters. Go to the body. Don't fall in love with going upstairs. No, there's no doubt about it. He's very good at actually bending that front knee. And that's one of the key things. No matter what side you're from, bend that front knee and get that hook. But really, body punching to me is a mentality, and you, you've got to practice that. I think it's hard to do that on the mitts. I, I get the sense that Rocha, not having seen him in the gym with Hector Lopez, probably puts in a fair share of work on the heavy bag. Digging in, digging in, oh. body work, and that drops him for the second time in the fight. First one was a hook, this one a hook to the body. Calderon jumps up, Wade Hedgepeth keeping a close eye on him. Oh, there's people watching. Right now, all over the world and in the country, they're seeing Alexis Rocha. They'll gain those muscles in him. He's no longer that chubby 200-pound kid. He's eating right and training with his brother. You see it paying off. This is what you want to do during Christmas. You wrap your presents like Cynthia's in Hawthorne, and you want to watch a fighter go at it. No need to be at the mall. And there he is, wrapping him up. There's Abraham Calderon. More body work. Grinding right now is Rocha. TKO boxing in Santa Ana is where Alexis Rocha is at. As are the Flora sisters who work out there. A lot of fans coming up from Orange County making some noise for Alexis Rocha. There's a good fan base building for him with a fan-friendly style. Yeah, and keep this in mind, he's only 19 years old. I get the sense with Golden Boy, there's not going to be a rush for him. Uh, it's going to be a long while before he, I think he's really tested. But I think tonight's been good work. He's learned a few things. Uh, I think creating distance and creating space on the inside as he looks back at this tape along with this trainer. Th there's some things to work on, and I think it's the first time a guy's really been able to do that. And again, uh, there's a nice little counter hook yep. Calderon. Calderon has been sneaky the last minute or so. 28-year-old Abraham Calderon from Puebla, Mexico. His game. Keep your hands up. Hands up. Drop twice. He's right back up. Ten seconds to go in the third. It is scheduled for four. Blood coming down the nose of Calderon. Who went down here in the third. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. 
And going back to round number three, it was the second trip to the canvas for Calderon, and once again, it was due to a right hand to the body once again, but got to give Calderon credit, Beto. I actually thought the last 90 seconds he actually huh. fought on even terms. It was actually sneaky, and you see some of the hooks that he was landing. It'll be interesting to see how Rios approaches round number four, which is the final round, given the fact he's built himself a sizable lead on the scorecard. Fourth and final round, Alexis Rocha and Abraham Calderon. Calderon getting worked on by Big Serge Estrada as some nose, had some blood coming down the nose of Calderon. Also, one of the best in the business, Mike Rodriguez, crime fighting cut man watching us. He'll be at the forum tomorrow, working in the corner of Ryan Garcia, fighter that Golden Boy is really high on. Thanks for support all over. It's always good when the boxing world is tuning in on Friday night. Calderon went down in the second and in the third. Turn him, turn him, turn him. Yet here he is, Beto, fighting in the fourth. This is, Watch I don't think this has been nearly as easy as Rocha expected it to be after scoring that first knockdown in the second. It's tougher than his one and three record indicates, is Calderon. Turned pro last year at the age of 27, late to get in his career. He started boxing late in his life. Always liked it, but they wouldn't let him as a kid down in Mexico, did Calderon. Finally, he said, I'm old enough, I'm doing it. What a way to earn a living. Stepping in there with Alexis Rocha. Good one, two from Rocha. More blood from the nose of Calderon. Can you hear the Alexis Rocha fan club getting a little antsy here. They're not used to seeing their guy in the fourth round. No, they're not, but this is a valuable experience. He's only been to distance once, and we mentioned again, out of the four knockouts, three of them have come in the first round. I, I think, again, I'm making an assumption here, it's the first time he's actually floored somebody that's gone the distance. I, I think that type yep. of stuff is valuable. So we've seen all his fights here on Ring TV, and Guys go down, it's like, oh, you know, that, that, was that was low, that was low. low. Or it wasn't low. Well, if they don't call it, is it, it isn't. But that was certainly south of the border. That, that was a little bit, oh, well, Wayne Hedgepeth warns him now. Warned him after, after he landed a couple more. Hey, you, you said, you and Doug Fisher have always said, you don't want a guy to be 10 and 0, 10 KOs, but he hasn't been pushed a little bit. No, you need to be pushed in every fight. I still remember the case of Tyrone Brunson, who first 20 some odd fights, he literally scored 20 first round knockouts. And first fight, round? Yes, and it Jeez. was some sort of Guinness Book of World Record. And you set the record, but it came at the cost of actual physical and career development. I guess you could say it was boxing's version of the mannequin challenge who he was facing at that point. Oh, man. Is that over yet? Yeah, I, you know what's funny? I remember the first time Brunson had a real fight was against Carson Jones, and he got completely exposed because it was literally the first time someone really showed him any type of professional resistance, and he fell apart. Four tonight, strong tonight rounds. Tonight was a very, very good, solid work for Rocha. There's some stuff to work on. You saw what he did well. But he got four rounds under his belt, and I think sometime in 2017, Beto, he will eventually become a six-round fighter. Four good rounds between Alexis Rocha and a very game Abraham Calderon. Calderon floored the second and third, got right back up, and brought the fight to the 19-year-old Rocha. A little blood from Alexis Rocha, first he was, time, huh? He was in a fight. I give Calderon credit. He was outgunned, but he was game, and I thought he was sneaky in the second half of that fight. Beth the Durant, Steve Kim. We're in Indio, California. Keep the tweets coming using the hashtag RingTVLive. We will check them out. And if you're driving on the freeway right now, you know, we know you're listening. You're not watching us. Eyes on the road, people. Eyes on the road. Safety first. Yep. You know, and second. And third. It's Christmas time. You can have your tamales, your champurrado, your abuelita chocolate. You know, but it's always good. You can get yourself a margarita if you want. <laughs> 
Sit back, enjoy the fights. Coming next will be Virgil Ortiz, a fighter from Dallas, Texas. I can correct me. Grand Prairie, Texas. Mm. Outside near Dallas. Of, near yes. Dallas. Because I know you guys are watching out there. It takes on Nesta Garcia. Then it'll be Javier Padilla, Jose Mora. And at 7 o'clock, it's Ronnie Rios, Roy Tapia. Yeah. After that, Eddie Gomez, Rashidi Ellis. And the main event tonight, Slava Shabramski and Sullivan Barrera. The judges are putting the cards together. Earlier this afternoon, the weigh-in at the forum for the final one, Bernard Hopkins and Joe Smith. And Joe Martinez is ready. Ladies and gentlemen, after four rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards, and all three judges have it scored the same, 40 to 34. Your winner by unanimous decision and still undefeated, Alexis Rocha. Had to earn it. Dropped his opponent twice, but he had, went the distance. Alexis Rocha. Let's look at some of the highlights, Steve. Yeah, and Alexis Rocha went to 6-0, and and I think that was a very good term. I think it's apt. He certainly had to earn it. Looked like it was going to be an early night to begin with as he floored him in the second. But again, uh, I think this is part of the story. Calderon, in the late stages of this four-rounder, was actually very game and live. Landed a few punches that bloodied the nose of Rocha. Goes to 6-0. and zero. And he did land a shot or two below the belt. Story of the night, though, and preferred choice of weapon was the left hand to the body. Those were the two shots that sent Calderon down to the canvas twice. Beto, he was 6-0 in 2016. Uh, I think there's a strong possibility that he has the same type of activity leading into next year. With this in mind, though, still only just 19 years old. But that helps a fighter like Rocha, right? When you knock down an opponent and he gets up. Well, that's what's going to happen at the higher levels. When he starts going to the 6, 8, 10, and eventual world-class levels, if he advances that far, um, they have the temerity to get up and actually fight back. How dare they? How dare they? But this is the life of a professional prize fighter. But Rocha is a guy to look out for. 19 years old. I think he's got a fairly high ceiling.